Hello everyone, my name is Miss Emily. I am a librarian at the Mooresville Public Library in Mooresville, Indiana, and welcome to today's program. So today we are going to be doing some science with pumpkins. So if you come to the library, you can get your own uh, pumpkin science kit. You'll get a pie-sized pumpkin and all the materials that you need to do at least one of the experiments with lots of other optional ideas of things that you can do to extend the fun uh, beyond that one. Okay, so what will you need to do uh, your pumpkin cauldron? So you'll need to uh, get your materials at the library. So that will include your pumpkin, a cup full of a vinegar mixture, and a bag that includes uh, your colored baking soda, uh, a couple of craft sticks, and all the instructions that you need, uh, plus lots of uh, other ideas to do science with pumpkins. You'll also need to get from home a tray of some kind. I have a large metal tray here, but like a, a baking dish that has a, a, a lip, like a Pyrex uh, glass baking dish would be fine. Something that will hold your pumpkin comfortably. You'll need something to cut your pumpkin with, and this is something I highly recommend you uh, have your grown-ups help with. I have some pumpkin carving implements, uh, but your grown-up might be able to use just a sharp knife. And for this experiment, we're not actually carving a face into the pumpkin, we're just cutting off the top, okay? You'll also want some protective gear. So I've got an apron that I'm going to wear. So uh, our baking soda does have food coloring in it and we don't want that to stain our clothes. Now put your sleeves up. I've also got some safety goggles. Uh, the chemicals that we're using are very mild but you never want anything to get into your eyes. So if you have safety goggles um, or if you wear glasses, this is a good time to wear them. And then also some gloves. So those will keep that food coloring off of our fingers and help protect us from uh, any splashes. If you'd like to do more experiments, you might need another pumpkin, uh, a large size or a pie sized one. So you can uh, check the grocery stores. They are pretty available right now. Um, some food coloring of whatever color you want. Vinegar, baking soda, and optionally, you might also want some dishwashing liquid. This is a very large bottle, um, but you're only gonna need a very small amount. This is just what we had here at the library. Before you get started and doing any cutting at all, take a moment and observe your pumpkin. There is an observation sheet, investigation sheet in your packet that has lots of questions about uh, ob the observable features of your pumpkin. So is it wet or dry? What color is it? How does it feel? How does it look? Uh, you can measure the distance around it. You can see if it floats or sinks in a, in a tub of water. So try out all of those things before you start your experiment because a scientist wants to know all of the information about the, the things that they're starting with before they even start an experiment. When you're working at home, be sure to make sure that uh, your grown-up knows what you're doing, for sure, um, and that you prepare your space to get messy, because this is going to be a messy experiment. So if you need to put down newspaper or put down an old sheet, uh, in addition to having your tray, those are all good things to do, just in case of a mess. So the first thing you'll want to do is have your grown-up cut the top off of your pumpkin. Okay, so I've got the top off of my pumpkin and now comes the fun part now. The pumpkin is full of pumpkin guts, so that's seeds and, uh, and these stringy things. Make some more observations and update your paper uh, based on the inside of the pumpkin, which is a lot different than the outside of the pumpkin. 
and have fun scooping all that out. You want to save that in a bowl because you can use it for other things later. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So you can use just a regular spoon. Or I've got this pumpkin scooper here. You might need to make your hole bigger to get things out. But I'm going to put this on my tray. Here comes all those seeds. So slimy part. You can wear your gloves at this point or you don't have to. None of this is going to be dangerous. Um, but some people like that slimy feeling, some people don't. Either way is fine. Slimy. So you can set aside all of your pumpkin guts and your spoon um, off to the side and we'll talk about what you might do with those later. But now you've got a pumpkin that is pretty hollowed out. There's no guts in there, no seeds. And uh, we're gonna start our experiment. Okay, now I'm going to put on my gloves to be safe. Make sure I protect my hands. Okay, so you can pour or spoon in your baking soda. Here's uh, will be in a little bag, but I'm going to start from scratch here. And you put a good amount, two to four spoonfuls, big spoonfuls, into your pumpkin. Ooh. And that is a good uh, demonstration of why we want our tray, because things can get a little messy. So you want a good amount of baking soda, break up any lumps that might be in there. I'm going to put one more spoonful just for good measure. And uh, your baking soda will already have some um, green food coloring in it, but I'm going to add some to mine. I'm just going to put a few drops in. I want this to be pretty green. So baking soda is a base. and Vinegar is an acid, and when those two get together, they cause a chemical reaction. Let's see what it looks like. You ready? Oh, look at that cauldron bubbling away. Oh my goodness. You can see. Now, notice what's happening to the foam. The foam is kind of going away, uh, and it becomes something like water because the, uh, the different chemicals are coming together and reconfiguring themselves, and one of the uh, byproducts is carbon dioxide. That's what causes all of those bubbles. And the other, one of the other uh, byproducts is water, H2O. Uh, and you can read some more about all of the ways that those actually come together on your sheet. We can still make some more fuzzing if you stir a little bit more. Make sure all of that um, baking soda has been in contact with your vinegar. And our bubbles went away pretty quickly, actually. So I'm wondering what will happen if we add some dishwashing liquid. So I'm going to add some more baking soda. Food coloring. I want it to look nice. The food coloring doesn't really affect the chemical reaction. It's just something extra. Um, and then I'm going to use some vinegar that has uh, dishwashing liquid um, in it already. So this is what uh, you will have in your packet. I'm going to take the lid off. Let's see if we can make those bubbles last a little bit longer. Oh my gosh, look at those bubbles. They don't seem to be um, as big. They seem to be much smaller bubbles. And they are really taking, doing some uh, good things. They're lasting a lot longer. They don't look the same as the uh, bubbles from before. And the reason for that is that our dishwashing liquid makes and holds bubbles. It's stronger 
than uh, the water that hold, held the carbon dioxide before. So all that carbon dioxide is getting trapped inside the soap and that is what keeps the bubbles bubbly for longer. All right, my friends. So what happens if we do that same experiment with a larger pumpkin that has a face carved into it? So I have a bigger pumpkin. This is one of those craft pumpkins. It's not real, uh, but you can do it with a real pumpkin. And I'm gonna see if I can make my pumpkin puke. All right, so we're gonna add our baking soda to the bottom of the pumpkin. Get at least a cup worth of this. We're gonna do quite a bit more than we did with our little pumpkin. It's okay if you spill a little bit, if you have a nice tray to catch those spills. This might even be something that you uh, do outside. <clears throat> so that is a good amount of baking soda. One more spoonful for good measure. I'm going to add my food coloring to make it colorful foam. You don't have to, it could be white. And now I've got my vinegar that has already had some dishwashing liquids um, mixed in with it, all right? So, are you ready? Let's see if we can make our pumpkin puke. All right, one, two, three. Oh my gosh. There it goes. Oh, look at all that foam. Oh my gosh. It's so foamy. Look at how much is going on. This is a good uh, reason why you need a big tray or to be outside. Blech. I love it. Feel free to stop by the library to get your packet, all the things you need to do, the smaller pumpkin, and then uh, some great ideas on your sheet has all of the instructions on how to do that, how to do this experiment, as well as other things. So remember our <clears throat> pumpkin guts from earlier. If you saved those, you can save some seeds to plant and observe the new plant uh, coming in. You can make pumpkin slime using the guts and seeds. That's a really cool thing to do. There are instructions for roasting your pumpkin seeds. They are tasty with a little salt and oil. <clears throat> um, if you get a separate pie pumpkin at the store, there's instructions on how to make pumpkin pie from scratch, starting with a fresh pumpkin. I would not use the one that we did the experiment with. You don't want to uh, get any of those chemicals into your pumpkin pie. That won't taste good. Uh, and then the last idea is to take your carved pumpkin that maybe you're going to put out on your porch and to start a journal and observe what happens to that pumpkin day by day as it rots. So you'll get to um, see how nature takes back all that pumpkin uh, and it's kind of fun to see it like kind of collapse into itself. Very cool. So all of those ideas and uh, are here at the library, stop by for your packet, do some science with some pumpkins. I can't wait to hear what you accomplished and how your, uh, how your experiments worked. Still got a little bit more in there. So thank you and we'll see you next time. Take care.